Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at entropy change and standard entropy. We're going to talk about what standard entropies actually are, why and how entropy change occurs in reactions, and the use of standard entropies to calculate the change in entropy for a reaction, with the combustion of methane used as an example. Entropy has been covered in a separate video, and I recommend you make sure you watch that video before this one. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about standard entropies and entropy changes, it is essential you are comfortable with entropy and what we mean by the entropy of a system. As a quick refresh though, entropy is commonly described as being a measure of disorder or the dispersal of energy within a system. It is essentially the energy within a system that isn't useful for anything. If there are lots of possible ways of arranging the energy that a group of particles have, there is a greater chance of the particles arranging themselves where the energy is spread out as much as possible, making them more stable overall. As energy spreads out or dissipates in a system, it becomes less useful, in fact useless, as it can no longer be transferred out of the system as heat to do work. This energy is described as entropy, and it increases with the level of disorder and possible arrangements of particles in a system. Units for entropy are joules per kelvin per mole. Temperature changes the possible arrangements of particles within a system, meaning it changes the distribution of energy. Increased temperature means increased entropy. Entropy is a property a group of particles have, meaning it is measured based on the number of particles in a system, and as the standard unit for number of particles in chemistry is the mole, entropy is measured per mole of a substance. As a result of all of this, solids have lower entropies than liquids, and liquids have lower entropies than gases. Warmer systems have higher entropies than colder systems, and systems with more particles in have a higher entropy than the same type of system with fewer particles in. Recap done, let's go. If we take the simple definition here and treat entropy as a way of measuring disorder, this means every substance must have its own value of entropy, as every substance is ordered in a slightly different way. For example, if you took one mole's worth of water molecules at room temperature and one mole's worth of solid carbon at room temperature, the arrangement of particles in both systems is very different, meaning their level of disorder is also different, giving them different entropies. Even the substances that are in the same state will have different entropies. The arrangement of ions in solid sodium chloride will be different to the arrangement of ions in, say, aluminium chloride, at the same temperature, as the ions are different sizes and are unable to pack or arrange themselves in the same way, given a different amount of disorder. The difference in entropy here will be very low, as both structures are very similar and ordered in a very similar way, but technically they would have different entropies. This means whenever a set of reactants reacts to form products, a change in entropy will occur as the products will have a different entropy to the reactants. We show a change in entropy as delta S, delta representing a change and S representing entropy. For example, when hydrogen gas and oxygen gas react to form water, there is a clear change in entropy. Hydrogen and oxygen are both gases and the water formed is a liquid. The entropies of hydrogen and oxygen will be higher than that of water and a change in entropy will occur. The other interesting thing with this example though, isn't just the entropies of the substances involved in the reaction, but also the number of moles of each. Remember, entropy changes depending on the number of particles in a system. A higher number of moles of particles will mean a higher entropy, and a lower number of particles will mean a lower entropy. This is again because a higher number of particles means more possible arrangements of particles and a higher level of potential disorder. With the hydrogen and oxygen reaction, two moles of hydrogen reacted with one mole of oxygen to form two moles of water. On the left hand side of the reaction, the reactants, there are a total of three moles of gas particles in the system. 
After the reaction, making the product, there are two moles of liquid particles in the system. Not only has a liquid been formed from a gas, meaning a decrease in entropy already, but also the number of particles has decreased from 3 moles to 2 moles, further decreasing the entropy. When looking at entropy changes for a reaction then, we have to look at not just the type of particles reacting and changing, but also the number of moles of particles reacting and changing. Just by looking at some simple reactions, it can be easy to see whether entropy increases or decreases. For example, the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate must clearly have a positive entropy change. One mole of solid calcium carbonate turns into one mole of solid calcium oxide and one mole of carbon dioxide gas. Not only are we going from one to two moles of particles, already a good indication of an increase in entropy, but also one of these extra moles of particles is a gas, which will definitely have a higher entropy than the original solid, regardless of the type of gas being reacted or formed. Equally, if we look at the formation of magnesium chloride, one mole of magnesium reacts with a mole of chlorine gas to form a mole of solid magnesium chloride. There are two moles on the left-hand side and one mole on the right-hand side. A decrease in moles of particles means a likely decrease in entropy. As a further help to predict the entropy change, one of the moles on the left-hand side is from a gas, very high entropy. The one mole of solid on the right as products will be very low entropy, further showing us that the entropy of the reacting particles decreases. This means then that we can identify whether some reactions are likely to have a positive or negative entropy change just by looking at the number of particles and states of the substances involved. This isn't always straightforward though, and certainly if we want to know exactly how much the entropy changes, we need to add in some numbers here. One of the biggest problems when dealing with entropy changes for reactions and processes is that entropies of a substance change based on the temperature and pressure of the system they're in. For example, ice, liquid water, and steam are all the same substance, made of the same molecules H2O. And yet clearly, all three of these states of H2O have very different entropies. To enable comparisons between entropies of different substances to be made, standard molar entropies are used. This just means when we talk about standard entropy of a substance, we are referring to the entropy of one mole's worth of the substance under standard conditions. 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals. The units for standard entropy are joules per kelvin per mole, and are shown with the normal symbol for entropy, capital S, a little round circle, then this means standard conditions and amounts. All standard molar entropies are positive values, as only a perfect crystal at absolute zero, no thermal energy, could have zero entropy, and this is impossible in our universe. If the standard entropies for all reactants and products in a reaction are known, it is straightforward to find the standard entropy change that would occur for the reaction. The standard entropy change for a reaction equals the sum of entropies of products minus the sum of entropies of reactants. It is shown with a triangle, delta, for change, before S for entropy, and the standard symbol. Sum of just means all values added together. It is shown in formulas with a symbol, sigma, that looks a bit like a strange E. Let's look at the combustion of methane as an example of this. One mole of methane, CH4, reacts with two moles of oxygen, O2, and forms one mole of carbon dioxide, CO2, and two moles of water, H2O. The standard entropy of methane is 186.3 oxygen 205.1, carbon dioxide 213.7, and water 69.9, all joules per kelvin per mole. Remember, we also have to account for the number of moles of particles involved in the reaction. Only one moles of methane react, but two moles of oxygen react, meaning the sum of entropies of reactants would be 1 times 186.3 plus 2 times 205.1, as each standard entropy value only refers to one mole of each substance. 
given a total entropy of reactants of 596.5 joules per Kelvin per mole. For the products, one mole of carbon dioxide forms, but two moles of water form, meaning the sum of entropies for products would be 1 times 213.7 plus 2 times 69.9, given 353.5 joules per Kelvin per mole. Overall entropy change would be 353.5 minus 596.5, given minus 243 joules per Kelvin per mole. This shows us that for the combustion of methane carried out under standard conditions, the entropy change for the reaction system is minus 243 joules per Kelvin per mole. This may seem a little odd, as you've probably heard it said that the entropy of the universe must increase overall for a reaction. Now, we know that the combustion of methane is feasible. You only have to light a Bunsen burner to see that. Remember that this entropy change is only referring to how the entropies of the reactants change. There is the rest of the universe surrounding this reaction, and based on the heat energy that gets released during this reaction, the entropy of the universe can increase. So long as it increases more than the entropy of the reacting system decreases, the reaction is feasible. This idea of entropy being used to find out how feasible a reaction is has been covered in separate videos about Gibbs free energy and total energy. Check the links in the description below. So to summarize, the entropy of a system is based on the possible arrangements of particles or disorder within the system. This means every substance has its own value of entropy as particles in different substances are arranged or ordered in slightly different ways. To enable entropies of different substances to be compared, standard molar entropies are used. Standard entropies refer to the entropy of one mole's worth of a substance under standard conditions, 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals. The units for standard entropy are joules per Kelvin per mole, and are shown with a capital S for entropy and the little round circle showing standard conditions. All standard molar entropies are positive values. When a reaction happens, the combined entropy of the reactants will be different to the combined entropy of the products, as each substance will have its own standard entropy. This means the entropy of the reactant system will change during the reaction. This entropy change is shown as delta S. The entropy change of a reaction can be determined by using the standard molar entropies of reactants and products. Entropy change equals sum of entropies of products minus sum of entropies of reactants. The number of particles and states of the substances reacting also have an impact on the entropy change of a reaction or process. If the total moles of particles increases during a reaction, this would indicate an entropy increase. If the total moles of particles decreases during a reaction, this would indicate an entropy decrease. Solids have lower entropies than liquids, and liquids have lower entropies than gases, meaning the states of products compared to reactants can also be used to predict entropy changes. I hope you found this rather long <laughs> video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below, and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.